Right now, a man climbs New Six Studios TV tower. The tower is 400 feet in the air. And right now, first responders are working to get that man to come down safely. This dangerous situation started unfolding outside our studios just before 11 this morning. This is New Six at 4. I'm Ginger Gadsden. I'm Julie Broughton. And I'm Lisa Bell. Orlando firefighters and police are outside right now working to make sure he gets safely to the ground. And we want to tell you we will not be showing the man live on the tower. News 6's Mike DeForest joins us now live outside our studio. And Mike, within the last hour, that man climbed even higher up that tower. That's right. This has been going on for about five hours now, Lee. So I can show you off the corner here. You can see where there's some Orlando police vehicles. Just to the left is our uh, TV tower. Now, again, we don't want to show any live pictures while this situation is unfolding. This is a very dangerous situation for this man. Um, but I know we do have a photo that shows him taken earlier today. It was around 11 o'clock. He entered a secure area and began climbing our TV tower here. Some employees noticed him immediately. Orlando police, Orlando Fire Department were on the scene all day. Uh, a negotiator on a loudspeaker has been trying to talk him down. Now, throughout the day, uh, the man would go up uh, several dozen feet on a, a very thin ladder, stop for a while, and then continue higher. Probably about an hour ago, some Orlando firefighters made the decision to try to go up there and perhaps give him a harness and help him down. So those firefighters, part of a high-angle rescue team, uh, just start, started to ascend the tower. At that moment, uh, the man who was close to the top but not quite at the top yet, he made one more final push to the very uh, extreme top of this 400 feet tall tower. Uh, it, it appeared at that point the Orlando firefighters decided, you know what, let's back down. And so those firefighters actually came down. Uh, within about a half hour after the firefighters got off the tower, the man actually started coming back down again very slowly. He'll come down a few steps, stop, come back down some more. Now, we don't know if this is a motivating factor, but uh, there is some bad weather in the area. We have had lightning flashing, uh, uh, loud thunder. It's been raining occasionally. We know that man is on a very thin ladder that's there, uh, which is presumably getting very slippery in this rain. Uh, this has been a tense situation all day, not only for us here at News 6, who've had to watch this out our office windows. Our vehicles aren't able to leave here, but also people passing by on John Young Parkway there near Orange Blossom Trail. You can see live that the uh, traffic, it's moving, but it's very slow. Uh, uh, Orlando police trying not to stop traffic, but in the meantime, uh, they've got their uh, uh, their crisis negotiator out there uh, talking to this man. They know his name. They say that he has a mental health history. They're familiar with him, and uh, they have been in contact with his family, and they're just trying to talk him down. At this point, I'm taking a look, and the man is just sitting about maybe a quarter, maybe a, th a little less than a quarter of the way from the top of the tower and uh, we are just standing by to see what happens next. I'm going to send it back to you. All right, Mike DeForest reporting live for us right outside the new six studios. Trooper Steve Montiera joins us now and Steve, you were one of the first people to actually see the man come onto our property this morning. You know, what are the crisis negotiations saying to him? I, we could kind of hear them using the bullhorn on our right. way in today. What are they trying to say to him right now? Well, at this point, it's all about a dialogue, mm -hmm. just having a conversation, really. Mm -hmm. And that's all they want to do. I, and I, I want to let anybody at home who's kind of curious about all this, it's 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 simply trying to help somebody right now. This is someone obviously in a dire situation, yeah. putting them in, in, in a situation I can guarantee that they do not want to be in. Mm -hmm. So what's happening right now, uh, kind of in the crisis negotiation world, once you start talking, we're not going to leave you. So this, these negotiators uh, will be out there until this man is brought down safely. And again, it's, it's pouring down rain. We can hear the lightning right, out there the right thunder. now. And this yeah. is video you're seeing looped. It's not live yeah. actual video. It's right. video from earlier today. Mm -hmm. Now, you are a crisis negotiator, is yes, that right? Yes, I'm a certified negotiator. Went through school out in Brevard County uh, for these type of situations. Yeah. And w tell me about what you would be saying to this guy right now, because we've seen first responders go up, and when they go up, he goes higher. Right. So so they initially showed on scene, they shut the entire area down. Obviously, we don't want to scare anybody. We don't want him to feel intimidated by any means. Um, one of the crisis negotiators showed up, and immediately she started a dialogue with him, trying to, kind of, hey, this is, we're here to help. Listen, you're not in any trouble. And I think a lot of people who are in these type of situations feel that they're in trouble. And sure. you're not. Like, just because you did this, there's a situation that caused you to do this. You haven't caused any harm to anybody. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, we just want you to come down. So the dialogue will continue. They have gone back 
back between English and in Spanish uh, to try to talk to him because they feel that he may be bilingual. Mm -hmm. So anyway, to see, get a reaction, a physical reaction from him, whether he's waving or just acknowledging mm -hmm. that the, he can hear them is all that these guys are looking for right now. And like you said, yes, some uh, firefighters did attempt to start to climb, um, obviously with the right safety equipment. Yeah. And they got about halfway up when the individual went to the tip top mm -hmm. of this 400 I mean, foot tower. Yeah, and that is one question. I mean, how high can the firefighters go? And this is a very large tower. And again, it's right along John Young Parkway and there's still a lot of traffic mm -hmm. moving by in that area right So they now. can go as high as any tower really is. You think about this, we live in the number one tourist destination almost in the country mm -hmm. and we've got roller coasters. So our first responders are really trained for stuff like this. You know, mm -hmm. I was walking in here and it kind of makes me a little emotional to think that our first responders are mm -hmm. out there right now and are doing everything they can, sorry, to, to really mm -hmm. to bring someone's life yeah. back to kind of level ground. I just want to go ahead. And yeah. you know, we're dealing with lightning out there. So mm -hmm. these firefighters, they can't go up. And that's why weather. they started to come down. Mm -hmm. So they, Tom, uh, Chief Meteorologist Tom Soros kind of gave us a heads up. Hey, look, some serious weather's coming in. Uh, we went out there and formed the crew. As they were halfway up, some lightning struck around and they're, you know what? It's just not worth it at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. We're gonna, he's not, he's not in a, in a a really dire immediate danger. Yeah. He's sitting uh, in, a, in a spot. So let's go ahead and scale back down and let's, right. let's keep talking. Well, to tell him. me this, once, it, once they do, and I hope it has the best possible outcome, if they are able to reach him, how are they then going to bring him down? Because it is tough to get up there. Yeah. And then now you're talking about bringing another person down. How are they both gonna come This down? is the hardest question I have had to answer all day by so many people here. It is truly a waiting game. There is gonna be no rush on this. There's going to, he's gonna come down if they can sit there and talk to him. But I mean, physically, will they have to grab him to make sure he yeah. comes down? Yeah, that, that's at some point it could happen that way. Mm -hmm. And they would only do that if they were not also putting themselves mm -hmm. in serious risk yeah. or in the process of trying to rescue him, putting him at risk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you know, if they grab him, he falls, mm, they, they fall, fall. Yeah. they don't want that. So I do wanna get in real quickly. If there are other people out there who are watching who have family members or who themselves are in a crisis situation, what resources are available to people? You know, you can call anybody. It is Suicide Awareness Month going mm -hmm. on right now. Uh, there are so many resources out there. Call your local church. Even, believe it or not, a lot of people don't know this. You can call your local police department yeah. and just call them and say, hey, I need to talk to somebody. Call a friend. And at the end, if you're at home right now and you're that person that could be in a situation like this, listen, you're not alone. You've got us here at News 6. You've got every first responder out there. This is not the way to do things. But if you find yourself in a situation, understand OPD out right now, and right now is seriously just trying to help him. Everybody get wants yeah. this guy to get it, it is a very, okay. very tense moment, but they're doing everything they can.